now we have our next keynote speaker amongst us dr nidhi khurana and a, uh, and a close colleague and uh, um, a head for academic coordinator at faba university uh, faba academy so dr khurana is currently the head for uh, academic coordinator with faba academy which is aimed at imparting industry relevant skills to the life science students so besides uh, being a molecular biologist by training she is also a life science mentor and has mentored over 200 more plus students till now for career building in life science sector so uh, with that i would like to invite dr kurana uh, hello nidhi yes hi hi mohit uh, i'm sure you guys are having a great day and uh, congratulations first of all for this event and thank you so much for introducing me to the audience um okay so shall we get started yes great um before i get started everybody um i would love to know my audience so and i would also appreciate if we can be as interactive as possible so let me start by asking all of you your uh, you know the current status uh, like your um, educational qualification uh, your stream it would be nice to know your background like in terms of where you come from as in um, educational qualification you know your msc phd uh, please type in the chat box i would love to see some answers because you know my talk is about um, finding that missing link between academia and industry people are talking about uh, that the gap in academia and industry so what is that gap and what should we do as professionals and as students you know to fill that gap to make a bright future for ourselves so do we have an interactive audience here my first question uh let me know phd wow thank you jyoti for answering uh, i am expecting a few more answers everybody are you bsc masters okay msc bioinformatics students bachelors of pharmacy very nice thank you tiffany rupa divya great oil biotechnology phd msc biotech bsc great phd beginning uh glad to know trisi msc genomics and precision medicine okay that's an interesting mix of audience that you have uh, you know ranging from undergraduates till phd's and um, researcher okay so i will now uh, share my screen and you can keep answering in the chat box um let me share okay can you all see my screen give me a thumbs up great all right everybody so the you know that gap that i talked about between academia and industry it is hurting the entire ecosystem the entire uh, ecosystem of life sciences and industry why because on one end the companies complain that you know they cannot hire fresh graduates or uh, you know inexperienced people because they do not they're not adequately skilled and on the other hand the complaint by the students from the students is that you know companies do not hire them and so there's a misconception around number of job opportunities or uh, you know the training the number of um, uh, training courses that can enhance their skills so there is some kind of a missing uh, link there so my talk is going to focus on what are the expectations of the industry and what is academia based on my observations what is academia currently doing okay to help the students make that transition but before i delve into all of this let me start by uh, you know a, a common expectation from uh, that we have from ourselves when we enter into college you know that first day of college after um, after our school and what what do you have in mind when you join your college you know the expected uh, professional path by the students looks something like this you know you ought to complete your graduation or post graduation uh, and then you apply for jobs uh, you are expected you expect yourself to get a job and then you perform well you get promoted and then you know live the life you desire so tell me you know, at least i had this uh, expectation when i joined the college i would love to know from you 
after your bsc msc phd whatever course you're doing what is your professional expectation from you does it align with what is what you're looking at the screen right now yes or no give me a thumbs up do you expect to get a job from whatever you're learning in your institution isn't that the sole purpose to find a career for yourself yes or no guys okay great so exactly most of you are saying yes that is the expectation you know but do you think that this expectation is being fulfilled just in that manner that you are thinking about it so the reality is a student completes graduation or post graduation degree program then they apply for jobs and then what do you see you know struggle to get hired maybe you know most of you may have also experienced it if you actually um, you know tried applying for jobs uh, you do not hear from organizations for interviews you send out your cvs to hundreds of uh, jobs but you know you know uh, you do not get back with any reply you're told that uh, you do not have the required skill sets to work in the life sciences industry and maybe if you get an interview you you turn down because again as a as a fresher you're told that you do not have relevant experience you know who how many of you actually relate to either of this scenario here andy here says no jobs even after masters in life sciences uh it's, so you know i i i do not want to comment on that right now because there are jobs andy i can assure you that but it's just the approach and because nobody is preparing us to approach for those jobs so that is why we are not taking the right steps at the right time to really benefit from the opportunity so here the reality that uh, you know that i have shown you on the slide it resonates with most of you and this is what my observation after talking to you know 500 plus students in groups on personal basis most of you come up with this scenario so do you see a problem here with our expectation from academic institutions and basically the outcome of the entire scenario we expect our institutions our colleges our universities to prepare us to build a career in life sciences but somewhere something is missing because after we complete our education from that college or university we actually end up struggling to get a job right so what is that missing link what does the industry tell most of the time to the candidates who approach them for a job that you do not have the adequate skill sets and i'm sure and after talking to a lot of students out there life sciences students our academic institutions do not even you know uh, lay enough emphasis on the term skill sets in, you know enough so most of you or you know if i have an intelligent audience here good because most of the students who i have talked about they are not even aware of the term skill sets the term skill sets confuse them so let me just you know uh, give a brief um, insight into what a skill set is it is actually the knowledge the ability or experience needed to perform a job it could be any job guys it could be r and d it could be management it could be uh, you know um, accounting so based on the skill sets that you have worked on and you know you're working on to hone them with your everyday uh, practice or your experience or your exposure you develop these skill sets which you can use for the for your job later in the future okay so in terms of skill sets also people talk about two kinds of skill sets one is soft skills it's basically nothing but your personality on the whole how you react personally to your surrounding in various aspects but there's another um, so academic institutions do contribute towards improving your soft skills uh, but most of the work should be done by you when it comes to hard skills these skills are actually quantifiable and teachable and they include the specific technical knowledge and abilities required for a job so they are technique oriented and it is the hard skills that 
the academic institutions or we expect uh, the uh, the institutions to prepare us when we you know go for college go for a course to prepare us in terms of hard skills so that when we approach for a job at a company we are not turned down because of lack of adequate skill set so here now i would like to point out various um, uh, my, you know these are all my observations and how, what is academia focusing on instead of actually preparing you for a career in life sciences so academia focuses on completing the syllabus and giving good cgpas to the students let me know in the chat box if you agree to these points or not i would love to see your answers see we have an educational curriculum to follow okay and academia restricts itself to that curriculum but what do i mean by giving good cgpa actually most of us come from the background where you know during our school time if you are toppers if you are among the top 10 we really you know um, uh, you know our parents take pride uh, in us and uh, we really make uh, everybody proud our teachers our family and everybody so we have this mindset that when we enter college that is the sole requirement by a candidate to get a good cgpa most of us think when we enter into our bachelor's program that having good cgpa is what is going to get us a very good job but how many of you really know the example of people who are doing great in their career but have, did not have the good cgpa back in the day it's actually not about the cgpa cgpa absolutely matters because that is where your basic understanding of the subject is coming from however you need to implement the techniques the subject knowledge that you are acquiring okay and put it in practical aspects so what matters is exposure so having cgpa is important but you need to move beyond cgpa to literally build on that career for yourself second point academia actually teaches about applications i'm not saying uh, in our colleges we've never Uh, had uh, you know we never knew the um, applications of any technique that we were studying but the restriction here is the teach about applications of a technique but only theoretically you know uh, for example rdt recombinant dna technology how many of you have answered the question you know where rdt is used on a paper <laughs> as a part of your answer and listed the applications on the answer and that's it you did it to score good marks how many of you literally delve into the detail of the application of rdt in solving real life problems which companies uh, you know with solutions are um, uh, you know uh, they're favored by rdt so it's only theoretically that the focus is uh, fixed on the third aspect is actually all the basic and advanced knowledge of the topics are covered but you know how these are implemented to find a solution or create a product is not emphasized upon let me know you know you are allowed to uh, give your views here with respect to the points that i am putting up guys so when we study about any topic during our college yes we study about its basics yes we study about its advanced but what we fail to study is the implementation of the technology to really find a solution or how using the technology a product is created in real life scenario right so that is where the gap is in understanding the entire um, operations behind life sciences industry another academia actually thinks industrial visits are enough to teach students about how the work happens in an industry so let me know while i was you know uh, putting up this point uh, this i mean i was laughing to myself but actually that's true in my msc also i had an industrial visit and i i'm sure in your universities also most of the places uh, they arrange these industrial visits to understand you know to give you a sense of how industry works but is that what is required what does it even do for, for like a 5 hours or 6 hour visit what does it how does it help a student but colleges do it um and basically they should do something more than that to really help the students understand the entire scenario of life sciences industry 
another point they do not educate the students about the concepts of skill sets required in the industry as i have emphasized upon it earlier that you know the term skill sets how to build on them how to really analyze your strength and weaknesses to develop those skill sets for you so that you really enjoy what you do going forward is completely lacking and then the ironically very few institutes try to place their students after their graduation but the entire process of those placements that occur for life science student is hollow it does not have any meaning and does not help the students much in their career building guys now that's the truth you like it or not most of you how many of you literally continue with the job that you know uh, that you're placed after your college does that even align with your strengths and weaknesses does that give you a sense of uh, you know whether you are built for the job or not whether you're going to enjoy it or not nothing there's no preparation behind that uh, scenario so academia does a lot there are a lot of points here but i think the way it executes this thing needs to have more meaning to it let me know if you agree to me or not here give me a thumbs up if we are aligned on this uh, um, you know um, at this magnitude so give me a yes or no if you really connect to what i'm talking here on the other hand guys i need you to focus on what the industry wants okay till now we actually saw what academia is providing us in terms of preparing us for career building in life sciences but what is what is it that the industry wants so everything is based on the applications of the techniques in the industry okay we have talked to many people from far by itself we conduct many panel discussions we are going to one on one personal meetings with with the industry leaders to understand the gap you know so everything in industry is based on applications of the techniques industry is actually product or solution centric okay it seeks individuals who understand the basics and applications of the techniques used in the company when they say that you do not have the adequate skill set what do they imply so for example they're looking for somebody who uh, they're looking for somebody who knows about the use of hplc okay now if you are someone who's used hplc before you fit right into their uh, pocket but the thing is if you are not very well acquainted with hplc if you do not know how to handle the equipment if you do not know uh you know how to work with it how to generate data with it how to interpret its data or troubleshoot the experiments that are performed with that experiment then you know you cannot add value to that job and industries look when they go through your resumes when they go through your profiles what they're looking at they're looking at various ways how you can add value to them how you can help them grow and that is where this lack of a skill set is coming in our educational curriculum is too much focused on providing us basic and subjective knowledge when it comes to practical it's mostly restricted to whatever we learn in the laboratories but that does not do justice to what is required in real time at industry level okay so industry seeks individuals who know how to handle the equipment can generate and interpret the data and most importantly is able to troubleshoot experiments sometimes industry would employ somebody who would not have a hands on experience on hplc so there is this another factor when you are interviewing for that position or you are uh, you know telling about yourself to that uh, recruiter potential recruiter it's more about your attitude your uh, you know if you would not have had the hands on experience on hplc but you should know what hplc is what is its principle what is the uh, you know uh, the insights behind generating data from it how does it help uh, their projects you know like why do you use hplc so at least these are the aspects you need to know and then as a fresher having hands on or no having hands on can be tackled at some level okay so for that only you know there was this one um, uh, statement in the chat box which said that there are no Uh, not enough job opportunities after msc no there are guys okay it's just that 
we need to approach them in the right manner and life sciences students actually need to put in a little bit more effort as compared to the other streams engineering it computer science anything uh, because they have been established uh, from a very long time ago in this in this scenario and for life sciences uh, students mostly the path uh, you know till now has been bsc msc phd postdoc and then becoming a professor right but now you see a lot of companies you see a lot of uh, industry uh, you know organizations that are coming up with projects with healthcare projects with life sciences biotech pharma you know it's always been there and now it's time to open up our minds also to explore these opportunities but life sciences students need an extra push an extra nudge to really approach those opportunities in this case so now we know what industry wants from us and how academia is not able to uh, provide us that kind of training here i have actually uh, put up a snapshot for you about the typical academic syllabus that we have so this is a general uh, some of the general topics that all of us find in our syllabus be it msc biotech microbio biochemistry and everything and then below i actually have industry skill requirements so you see in our academic syllabus we have these big terms you know bioinformatics genomics and proteomics bioentrepreneurship uh, nanobiotechnology bioprocessing engineering and fermentation technology these are actually industry relevant subjects or topics the problem is how the academia teaches us about these subjects for example genomics and proteomics or bioinformatics if you really think academia was doing enough to really you know impart that skill to us which was industry relevant then an organization like omics logic okay which is doing great work in this scenario would have had no meaning but you know omics logic you are, are attending this webinar you are a part of their courses you know what they teach how they teach how nicely project oriented they are you know so case studies are important you need to work on real life problems to really understand how bioinformatics or genomics or proteomics or nanobiotechnology is helping you find a solution that is what is needed okay when it comes to industry skill requirements i want you to see the difference so industry skill requirements are advanced technical concepts in molecular biology in vitro assays and vivo models pre clinical drug discovery and development bio biopharmaceutical production and analysis you know facets of industry r and d focusing on product development and correlation between functions industry focuses on physiology pharmacology toxicology and regulatory studies you tell me which of these topics are covered in the academic syllabus in a way that we should be prepared to get a job right after our degree like negligible like guys negligible so here is the gap when i say that skill set is the missing link between academia and industry what i mean is this okay going forward what needs to change to really have a positive effect on this entire scenario what academia can do at their level to really help the students build their uh, career in life sciences industry starting right at the bachelor's level there should be mandatory industrial internships and preferably for 3 months why do you say this you know so uh, one day um, from papa we were organizing this workshop on drug discovery and development and uh, you know um, basically the our partner from the us he uh, randomly said that you know in our curriculum uh, the the students start taking internships from the very first year of their bachelor's so there you know in the us a bachelor is like four years so by the time they complete four years they have an exposure of working in four different industries at four different roles and so that is why when they graduate they actually feel ready to perform in the industry okay you are no longer lost because you've had prior four times experience of reflecting what you like what you don't like what are these various job opportunities how i can perform best in this particular role you know uh, you know having been connected to people at four different places you have built a community and network for yourself so strong 
that after four years, after those four um, uh, internships, you are actually connected to people who can help you get the job. That's what networking is. And that's what skilling looks like. Another thing that the colleges can, uh, you know, uh, ponder upon is empowering the culture of working on projects based on real life problems to add to the students' experience and foster entrepreneurship. Right now, you know, these colleges have these placement cells and entrepreneurship um, uh, departments and cells. But the thing is, some active, a proactive approach needs to be taken to empower a culture where the students are, uh, you know, they are required to team up, to work on real life problems, to find a solution at their level. There could be many solutions to one problem, everybody. And so when you do that, you actually get real time hands on experience. And you foster that mindset of entrepreneurship, the solution-centric mindset. Another thing, exposure to the pilot scale manufacturing projects and quality control studies for students should be conducted by collaborating with startups or industries to impart industry-relevant skills. You know, college also needs to educate them about careers outside academia and the necessary skills that each of those careers require. Because it is also important to understand that research and development is not the only option after your bachelor's, master's, or PhD, everybody. You do have different roles where you can outperform by your skill sets, by your, uh, you know, likings and dislikings, by reflecting, by building on your strengths and considering your weaknesses. You can go for other careers other than research and development. It's not mandatory as a master's student to really just go for research after your, you know, after getting the degree. So college needs to educate them about various career opportunities and how to prepare for them by telling them that this particular job requires these strengths. And if you're a person who has those strengths, go for that job, you know? So the last thing, the least that the college can do is encourage the students to build their career based on their strengths and weaknesses rather than following the herd. Just what I just mentioned. So. Over here, guys, let me know in the chat box that are you with me here or do you have any contradictory comment or your point of view or your perspective about this? So because I think that this is where the gap lies. This is how the academic institutions need to act upon to really uh, build, uh, you know, that mindset to really build experience, to really give the confidence to the students for career building in life sciences. Going forward. Now, this is a scenario that that was a scenario that academic, uh, you know, institution need to uh, do at their level. But that's I don't know how far that is from uh, practicing. So what you can do at your level, guys. So considering what the industry wants from you, considering uh, the limited amount of work that the academia can put in preparing you for getting jobs, it is your responsibility to take proactive steps in these areas that are shown here. So what you can do to make your transition smoother from academia to industry, go for internships, everybody. You know, go for internships at least once a year. While you're doing that internship, reflect on your strengths or build your experience around it, okay? You need to reflect on your strengths if you're liking it, if you're disliking it, or if, you know, if you need to consider that on an everyday uh, basis, would you be enjoying this role that you are a part of right now? Because having an internship gives you, gives you a lot of exposure that is required to really build that fulfilling career going ahead. Second is focus, focus, focus on networking, online and offline. I cannot say it enough. And I don't know if you're following me on LinkedIn. Most of my posts, they focus on this particular point, networking. As life sciences students, nobody uh, talks about it. Nobody encourages us for it. And so whenever we talk to uh, people, whenever, whenever we talk to the students, they always say, I'm not a conversationalist. You do not need to be a conversationalist to actually network. Network is when you connect with people, when you deliver value, when you take, you know, help them and take their help and build a community for yourself. So work on it. When I say online and offline, I'm talking about platforms like LinkedIn and offline. I'm talking about conferences, symposiums, your class, your seniors, your professors. Make full use of conferences and symposiums. Talk to people, 
you know you should go prepared when you go for a conference so that you know you you go with the targeted approach then you build connections reach out to your alma mater reach out to your professors who you know the entire strategy can really help you find that job for yourself it can easily get you hired if you start with the strategy at a very at the right time it is not late for anybody guys okay but if you start at the, at a younger level then you actually have ample amount of time to build around this so the last is increase your visibility talk to people let them know you exist until you tell them you exist how are they going to find out that you know you are some person who is strong at this and may be perfect for this job so if you increase your visibility if you talk to people around if you network right if you approach people and build connections there is no reason or there is no scenario that you cannot get hired so these are some things that you can do at your level to really bridge the gap and make your transition smooth from academia to industry so guys uh, i'll just take last two to three minutes to tell you how fava academy is helping in this space so to educate the students and support the students as they explore and further understand themselves in the career options and to gain valuable experience fava academy was launched in 2020 and what we do is we conduct webinars which are career oriented we uh, conduct these workshops which uh, upskill the participants uh, in industry relevant uh, skill sets uh, which gives them better career growth so just uh, giving us just about who is fava academy for so it has a lot to offer to every kind of domain of life sciences sector graduates and post graduates phd post docs and industry professionals faculty everybody uh so our strengths are we have upskilled actually 400 plus participants including early career professionals our speakers are you know for these workshops are invited from india and abroad to give you really a uh, whole some uh, you know exposure about the advancements that are happening in technology the career opportunities that are coming up in this field and so these are some of the workshops that ha we have conducted like drug discovery and development basics of chromatography techniques um hands on training on dna fingerprinting biosafety biosecurity upstream and downstream technologies of biologics and biosimilar and we do conduct workshops in collaboration with omics logics also uh, just like this we did last year biomedical data science and drug discovery and drug discovery and development this year so um now we're moving on to doing more hands on workshop because until uh, you know 2021 it was more like virtual but when you gain these extra skill sets which are industry relevant you are actually um, equipping yourself with uh, those adequate skill set that the industry is looking for so with this guys the these are some of the webinars that we have conducted um, you know for example rnai technologies and career opportunities this was about next generation sequencing and this was about science communication you know rewrite it you trends to become a science communicator we invite the experts from india and abroad the ceos they are doing out performing uh, themselves in their field so they bring their own wisdom and experience to teach you about these aspects um this is about the uh, one of the upcoming webinars with dr gautam das who is the co-founder and managing partner of my biome therapeutics and it is on 8 september i would love for you to explore uh this uh, opportunity and uh, register for this webinars our webinars are free of cost and so uh, you um, be a part of it and gain some value out of it so guys with this thank you so much um i would love to answer some questions if you have and let me know uh, if there is any way that i can help you with thank you very much